valley of the end. The valley of the end. The place of the final showdown between Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha. The place where Madara died and Hashirama emerged victorious. Or so everyone thinks. The valley remained pretty much untouched since the two fought, except for the addition of two gigantic statues. They represent the two fighters whose power could bring any country to its knees. They symbolize and honor those two legendary figures that left their mark in history. The statues of Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju, each one doing the battle seal as if until this day they were still battling each other. On top of Madara Uchiha's head, we find someone sitting there. The wind carried his cloak, allowing everyone to see his clothes. He wore a black long sleeve top that also covered his neck and chin, a pair of black gloves, and a pair of dark colored pants. On his waist, he wore a thick black belt with armor-like metal plates attached to it. He also wore a blue nail polish on his fingers and toes. But from all that, the most distinguishing feature he had on was a strange mask he wore. The mask was a strange orange in color and had a spiral pattern with a single hole for his right eye. The cloak itself was a high colored black cloak with red clouds adorning it. The cloak pretty much said that this someone belonged to the mercenary group known as the Akatsuki, who according to Jiraiya were searching for the Biju. The figure seemed to be deep in thought as anyone could see. He was gazing into the emptiness of the sky as if trying to find the meaning of life. Flashback. The same figure was seen walking through some cave in some unknown location. The figure stopped walking when he noticed two other figures approaching him. The first one had spiky orange hair with multiple metal piercings in his nose, ears, and bottom lip, but what stood out were his eyes, silver eyes with concentric circles around the purple. He was wearing the same black cloak with red clouds. The other figure was definitely female. She had blue hair, amber colored eyes, lavender eyeshadow, and a lab bright piercing. In her hair, she had a paper flower strapped to it. She was also wearing the same cloak as the other. We need to talk, Madara, the orange spiky haired figure said, uh, watching very closely to the figure with the orange mask. Of course, Pain. Toby is a good boy, Toby said in a childish, almost high-pitched voice. Enough with playing around, Pain said in a serious voice, making Toby instantly drop his childish ways and took a completely different stance. We have some information that you forgot to tell us, Payne explained. And what is it? Toby asked, but now his voice was more deep and serious. Kisame and Itachi went to scout the Kubijin Shiriki and heard the most interesting news, Payne cryptically said. Don't play games with me and get to the point, Toby said. He didn't want to deal with Payne right now. For starters, the QB claims to be Madara Uchiha's grandson, Payne said, and Toby's eyes widened. Your grandson, to be exact, Payne said, looking at Toby directly in his eye, waiting for his answer. And what proof does he have of that? Toby asked, trying to gain some time while his mind was running a mile per second, trying to figure out just what was happening. The fact that he is an uncounted Sharingan user seems to help, Payne said in a monotone voice. How very interesting. If that brat has a Sharingan, that can only mean that it came from Minato, as Kushina's family is very well documented, Toby mused and thought. That would explain how back then he knew I wasn't Madara, Toby concluded in complete shock. Even during his fight 14 years ago, he never felt or saw Minato Sharingan. That means I'm responsible for killing his only son, Toby unconsciously gulped. He hoped that Madara wasn't very attached to Minato, otherwise he would draw the short end of the stick. This will require some adjustments, Toby thought. Care to explain, Pain stressed out, looking about killing intent to further drive his point. This doesn't concern you, Toby flatly replied. Madara, Pain stressed, he has Mangekyo nearly killed both Kisame and Itachi. But they managed to escape, Payne explained. Everything was going so well, Toby thought, sighing to himself. And the brat as a mangyekyo was strong enough to drive Itachi away. Serves him right, Toby thought, chuckling to himself. 
I see, Toby said, still thinking about everything. If Madara had told him about his grandson, he would be able to mold him into his weapon. Even better, as his grandson was in Jinchuriki of the strongest Biju. Anything else? Toby asked. Yes, he seems to have the same intangibility ability as you, Payne said, and Toby was once again shocked. That brat was able to use Kamui. This would be a major setback since any time an Akatsuki member appears, he can warp away safely. That will make him extremely difficult to capture, Toby said shaking his head. He should have stayed in bed like a good boy. I want answers, Madara, Payne said with his voice slightly louder. I don't answer to you. You work for me. You would do well to remember that, Toby said with a smirk and a Sharingan glowing. But I'll get to the end of this, Toby said and swirled away, leaving a fuming pain in the woman's stoic at the encounter. I don't like this, the woman said, breaking her stoic face with one of suspicion. What proof do we have that he's even Madara? the woman asked. Everything matches, Conan. His power, his knowledge, and his grandson bears the same Sharingan ability, Payne stated. But that didn't seem to ease Conan's doubts and worries. Let's forget this for now. Let's focus on our current task and the preparations for hunting down the Biju, Payne said, and both left the cave. End of flashback. Toby was knocked out of his thoughts when he sensed someone approaching. Although he knew very well who was approaching, he didn't let down his guard. A popular saying came to mind. There is no honor among thieves. Just because the approaching figure was a subordinate and belonged to the Akatsuki doesn't mean he should be trusted. The figure was a tall, tan, muscular man. He wore a white hood and a black mask, with his eyes being the only visible part of his face. Underneath his mouth was stitched together at the edges, and he had long, dark brown hair. His eyes had an unusual coloring, green irises, no pupils, and red sclera. His clothing included the traditional Akatsuki cloak, and the forehead protector of his home village with a scratch in the middle, which symbolized that he was no longer loyal to it. He also wore a dark red nail polish and dark green Akatsuki ring with a kanji for north that was placed on his left middle finger. His entire body was covered with various stitches and uh, predominantly appeared to be sewn together. He was Kakazu, an s rank missing ninja from Takagekure, as displayed by his scratched headband. Is everything set? Do you have the sacrifices? Toby asked. Yes, they are ready for the leader to perform the technique, Kakazu explained sitting down next to Toby in the cliff. How do you know he'll tag along for the mission? Kakazu asked. You forget that Zetsu has spies everywhere. His spy network puts even Jiraiya's to shame, Toby explained with a smirk. Zetsu was a member of the Akatsuki. However, he wasn't the fighting type, and was more of the intelligence-gathering one. Fair enough, Kakazu said, agreeing with Toby. Do you remember your primary objective? Toby asked. Failure is not an option. He's crucial to my plans, Toby pointed out. I don't know why you need him, but who am I to question that? How hard can it be? Kakazu rhetorically asked. But how can you be sure he'll go along with it? Kakazu asked. It's not as if his objective was hard to accomplish, but it was very tricky. There's a reason why pride is a sin. With the right incentive, it makes people malleable, Toby cryptically said, washing the skies. What about the secondary objective? Kakazu asked. The funds are always good for the Akatsuki, and his chakra would also benefit our plans as a backup, Toby explained. Meaning, don't fail either, Toby said, licking out some killer intent. I've never failed a mission, Kakazu said in a strong, firm voice. I'll be watching, Toby said, swirling away. Let's get the show on the road, Kakazu said, getting up and heading towards the midst of the fire country. Konoha, Senju Compound, 12 hours earlier. It was a beautiful day in Konoha. It was warm and sunny all over. The sun was coming up shining upon Konoha as the merchants were opening their stores to start up a fresh new day. A few sun rays broke through the village's barrier and started waking up people inside the houses. This was the unfortunate event for Naruto. The room was dark and a few beams passed through the window and hit him right in the eyes, waking him up from his slumber. He released his small yawn and tried to shift in bed, but realized that he couldn't move. He looked down and smiled at his princess, snuggled next to him, resting her head in his shoulder. One of the things he enjoyed most was waking up with Hinata next to him. 
She started to slowly open her eyes, and that's when she noticed that Naruto was looking at her with a warm smile. She returned the smile just before she closed her eyes again, and placed her head on his chest, releasing a sigh of bliss and happiness. They stayed there for a few minutes, just enjoying the warmth of each other. Both happy they had each other in their lives. How do you like her new room? Naruto softly asked, still running his hands through her hair. He noticed that even though her hair was a mess from sleeping, she still looked beautiful to him, perhaps even more. The room itself wasn't overly large, but it was sufficient for a couple. The bed was obviously for two people. They had a nightstand on each side. A closet was embedded in the wooden wall with enough space for all their clothes. Their room also had a private bathroom and a small room they decided to use with scrolls and weapons. I guess it's okay. The pillow is still the same, though. He nodded said giggling, and Naruto chuckled. You know we have to get up, Naruto sadly asked. I don't want to. Five more minutes. He nodded acutely, pouted, drawing circles in his chest, trying to persuade him to sleep and cuddle a bit more. How about I get a shadow clone to bring us breakfast to bed, and Naruto asked, and he nodded and quickly nodded. She was about to reply when Naruto placed a finger on her soft lips. Breakfast for a kiss, Naruto said, and Naruto quickly replied, giving him a kiss. That'll do, Naruto said, chuckling, and made a shadow clone to prepare the breakfast so they could eat together. Not even five minutes later, Naruto's clone appeared in the room with a tray filled with juice, bread, and some fruit. Naruto sat up and easily placed Hinata between his legs with her back to his chest. They happily ate their breakfast since they didn't have any major concerns. They didn't have anything scheduled for today, and as such they could enjoy the day or maybe get a mission. So, what do you want to do today? Naruto asked while smearing some butter on bread and starting to eat it. Don't really know. Do you want to get a mission or something? He ought to ask while drinking some orange juice. Naruto pondered getting a mission, but then he remembered that they were both Junins, and as such, their sensei, Kurenai, would be no more. We're both Junins, so Kurenai is no longer a sensei, Naruto explained. He ought to realize that what Naruto said was true. Right after they did the Junin exams and promotions, they both left in a mission, so they didn't realize that teammate was no more. What now? He ought to ask, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. How about we swing by Granny's office to find out, Naruto said, and look towards the clock on the nightstand. It's past 10 o'clock, so Granny should already be in her office. Damn, we really overslept, Naruto said, chuckling. They weren't used to sleeping in, as they had team meetings before. I didn't mind, he ought to answer and replied. I bet you don't, Naruto tried to say with a serious face, but laughed nonetheless. They finished their breakfast, and Naruto made another shot of clone to take this stuff to the kitchen, and while all the way muttering something about lucky originals. Let's get up, Naruto said, and was about to get up when Hinata shifted their weight and ended up on top of him, pinning him to the bed. Just as we all know is going to happen next, Naruto smirked before his eyes flashed to his EMS and activated his Kamui. He faced right through the bed and reappeared in the middle of the room with a smirk. That's not fair, Hinata said, throwing him a pill that phased through him as well, making Hinata pout. All's fair in love and war, Naruto wisely said, and Hinata stared at him. She sighed and got out of bed, and they both got dressed and let the Senju compound. Heading towards the Okage's office, they needed to find their status as of now. Okage's office, Naruto and Hinata made their way towards the Okage tower, and up the stairs. They reached the office entrance to see Shizune by the desk. Big sister Shizune, your granny's secretary now? Naruto asked, and she nodded, going through paperwork. Poor you, Naruto said chuckling. Is granny busy? Naruto asked. No, you can go ahead, Shizune said, stamping another paper and placing it in a nearby stack. Naruto and Hinata walked up to the door and entered to see Shinati buried in paperwork, with Hiruzen nearby smoking his pipe without a care in the world. It looked like Hiruzen left the paperwork build up when he asked Jirai to go search for Tsunade. Hiruzen would have liked to read his each each book, but it might prove dangerous with Tsunade nearby. Morning, Granny, old man, Naruto said, grinning his grandmother in the old Okage. Tsunade looked up from the paperwork and noticed Naruto and Hinata standing in front of her. Hey, Naru and Hinata, Tsunade said, and Naruto sighed. He couldn't get his grandmother from calling that. On the other hand, Naruto called her Granny, meaning she would be old, which she didn't like. So it was an eye for an eye. What brings you to my nightmare? Shinati asked. Naruto pondered, telling her about shadow clones, but decided to hold it for later as a trump card. I'm evil, Naruto thought, chuckling darkly to himself. Actually, we're wondering what will happen to us since we are both Junins and currently work without a team. Naruto said, and Tsunade stopped her work. She brought her hand to her chin deep and thought. For starters, Shino Aburame didn't get promoted to Junin, and as such, he was placed in Team 10 with Ino Yamanaka. In Choji Akimichi under Asuma Saratobi, Shinade explained before picking another paper regarding Team 7. 
under Kakashi Hatake, and they'll hold on until we find a Genin to complete the cell. In the meantime, Sasuke Uchiha will still be a part of said team when not on Shunin's affairs, Tsunade said, and both nodded. Team 9, guys team didn't get promoted so they would continue on standard missions like the new Team 10. That means our old team is permanently disabled, he not to send it. What about Kurenai Sensei, he not to ask. She'll be returning to her normal life as a Jonin until she decides to take another Genin team, as Tsunade explained, and he not to nodded. Without a Genin team, Kurenai would most likely spend more time away from the village. What about us? Naruto asked. I was getting to that, Tsunade started. Both of you will most likely be paired with other Chunin or Jonin for missions until we find a stable team, if any, Tsunade explained, and both nodded. What about Gara and his siblings? Naruto asked, and Tsunade got a tick mark from all the questions preventing her from doing her work and enjoying her sake. They are Team 11, under Anko Mitarashi, since Tamari relies on her fan and Kankuro on his puppets and poisons, Tsunade explained. I just hope he doesn't turn Gara back to his crazy state. I kind of feel sorry for them. Perhaps killing them would have been more merciful. Naruto thought, shivering at his previous encounters with that crazy snake lady. Do you want to grab a mission while we're here? Naruto turned and asked Hinata. We don't have anything planned, might as well. Hinata replied, and Naruto agreed, pumping his fist into the air. Mission it is, Granny. You got anything for us? Naruto asked, and Hinata shook her head in defeat. She was buried in paperwork and had yet to decide on the newer teams. I guess I'll just have to pick up the new tunings and place them together, Tsunade thought before shifting through the papers and pulling out the newer promotions. Shizune, Tsunade called out. Yes, Lady Tsunade? Shizune asked, entering the office. Get me Shikamaru Nara and Sasuke Uchiha, Tsunade said, and Shizune left to summon both Shinobi to her office. What do you need those two for? Naruto asked, but he already had a suspicion. They will be your teammates for the next mission, Tsunade and Naruto sighed. Naruzen cringed slightly because he knew the story behind those two. I hope Sasuke is in that much trouble, Naruto muttered under his breath. What was that? Tsunade asked as she didn't hear Naruto. It's just that Sasuke and me don't really get along, Naruto simply said. Oh, is my little Naruto acting like a senju? He already hates the Uchiha's, Tsunade said, wiping out a fake tear. Naruzen and Naruto chuckled and Naruto shook his head at his grandmother's antics. By the way, you're both in the newest edition of the Bingo book, Hiruzen said, throwing him the book. Really? Naruto rhetorically asked, opening the book. Let me guess. Iwa, Naruto said, and Hiruzen sadly nodded. Congratulations, you both have targets in your heads now, Tsunade said with sarcasm, evident in her voice. Pages 112 and 113, Hiruzen said, and Naruto quickly found his record. Name, Naruto Senju, age 14, alias... Konoha's Thunder God, Status, Elite Chunin, Village Affiliation, Hidden Leaf Village, Rank, S, Bloodline, Sharingan, Known, Elemental Affinities, Wind, Fire, Lightning, Weapons, Maduro Chia's Fan, is a wide fan with three blood red tomos on each side, and has a long handle with bandages wrapped around the base, the main part of the weapon is light brown with the edges of being black. Abilities, Taijutsu, Jonin slash Kage level, Ninjutsu, Kage level, Fuinjutsu, Seal Master, Genjutsu, Chunin slash Jonin level, Summoning Contract, Fox, Jinchuriki of the QB, other known abilities, Naruto Senju was seen performing both the Rasengan and uh, Heroishin, techniques created by the 4th Hokage, also has the ability to transform its chakra into golden chain strong enough to hold the Shukaku in place. Physical description, stands at 5 feet 7 inches with long mid-black blonde spiky hair, which partially covers his right eye and deep blue eyes with three whisker marks on each cheek. Usually wears orange pants and dark blue combat sandals, he also wears skin tight black shirt with Anbu chestplate over it. Known relationships, Madara Uchiha, paternal grandfather, status deceased. Minato Namikaze, father, status deceased. Kushina Senju, mother, status deceased. Tsunade Senju, maternal grandmother, status, fifth Hokage, Hyata Kyuga, rumored girlfriend, status, Chunin, see next page. Bounties, Iwa, wanted alive, 50 million Ryo. Suna and Otto, wanted dead or alive, 10 million Ryo. Approach with extreme caution. Damn, they are well informed, Naruto said after reading his page, although I like my alias. The Thunder God has a nice ring to it, Naruto said, chuckling, and handed the book over to Inata. 
You do realize you just made enemies from three villages, you know, I said with a serious tone. I know, though I wonder why he won't watch me alive, Naruto mused out loud. Probably so they can skin you, Hiroshin said chuckling, making Naruto glare at the old man. What about Hinata? Naruto asked. Hinata looked up from the book and showed it to him. Name, Hinata Hyuga. Age, 14. Alias, Death Goddess. Status, Chunin. Village Affiliation, Hidden Leaf Village. Rank, A. Bloodline, Yakugan. Known, Elemental Affinities. Wind and Water. Weapons, Twin Trench Knives. Abilities, Taijutsu, Kage Level. Unknown technique that kills the enemy with a single touch. Ninjutsu, Jonin level, very skilled in water manipulation. Winjutsu, unknown. Genjutsu, unknown. Summoning contract, unknown. Other known abilities, known to be able to disable Jinchuriki with some seal technique. Uses weapons coated with deadly poisons. Physical description, stand at 5 feet 4 inches with a princess cut style dark blue hair and Byakugan eyes. She wears a cream colored hooded jacket with burr around the cuffs and hem with navy blue pants, known relationships. Hana Hyuga, mother, status, deceased. Hiyashi Hyuga, father, status, Jonin, Hyuga clan head. Hanabi Hyuga, younger sister, status, academy student. Naruto Senju, rumored boyfriend, status, elite Chunin, see previous page. Bounties, Suna and Oto, wanted dead or alive, five million Ryo. Don't approach if below a high Jonin level. Do not engage in Taijutsu. I like my alias better, Hinata happily said, eh, handing the book to Naruto. Death Goddess, Naruto said and hugged Hinata. I guess I can't call you princess anymore, Naruto whispered and coughed her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not a fake to cough and clear the throat to separate the couple before this could escalate. Yes, you will have to be extra careful with bounty hunters as of now, Sonata said. Even the lowest bounty of 5 million Ryo is enough to attract a lot of attention, Sonata explained. Yeah, but I'm ranked as a cocky level shinobi, not as an elite Jonin one. We won't go down easy, Naruto said, and Shunati shook her head. Idiot, don't let the fan get to your head, Shunati said, and Naruto waved his hands in defeat, not wanting to be punched. Come in, Shunati said, shifting her attention to the door. The door opened, and in came the brooding Sasuke Uchiha and the lazy ass Shikamaru Nara. They were both wearing a Chunin flak jacket and Anbu black pants. You called Lady Okage? Shikamaru said, yawning. It was supposed to be a peaceful day for Shikamaru, but the Okage had different plans for him. Yes, I have a mission for the four of you, Snotty said. It will be a B rank, maybe A rank, depending on the opposition, Snotty explained, and they all nodded. Naru, you will be the team leader since you hold higher rank, Snotty explained. No, don't call me that in public, Naruto pleaded, and even the almighty Sasuke sniggered. You see, you even made the emo brooding king laugh, Naruto stated, glaring at his grandmother. You have a problem, Naru, Sasuke said in a teasing tone. Shut up, idiot, Naruto said, and Sasuke scoffed. Moving on, Sonata said, uh, diffusing the situation before it escalated. Your mission is to protect and escort the daimyo's grants into the fire temple? Where is your link up with the daimyo? Since the twelve shinobi guardian are down, uh, four members. They can't spare anyone from their side, so the task falls to us, Sonata explained. And everyone nodded. Call him in and tell him that I have an escort team ready, Sonata and Shizune nodded. About twenty minutes later, a young teen walked into Okage's office. He looked like he was about 15, maybe 16 years old. He had light blue eyes with short and straight black hair that ended just around his neck. He was wearing a white kimono with dark red edges. On the kimono were floral designs in a different shade of red. This is Lord Kenshin, the fire daimyo's grandson. So I pointed out everyone from Naruto's team made a small balanced sign of respect. This is my escort, Kenshin asked in disbelief. A bunch of kids younger than me, Kenshin said, and Sasuke scoffed. I'm a member of the Uchiha clan. We are not weak, Sasuke said with pride in his clan. I seriously doubt that. It was an old Uchiha clan massacred by one of their own and a 13-year-old at that, Kenjin explained, and Sasuke's anger was boiling. Naruto decided to intervene before Sasuke shoved a Chidori through the person that they had to protect. I'm Naruto, leader of the team. I assure you we are more than capable of protecting you, Naruto said in a formal and courteous voice. You seem even weaker than the Uchiha, Kenjin stated in Naruto's side. What exactly was this kid's problem? He should know better than to underestimate Shinobi, as he should have plenty of interaction with the Guardian 12. Troublesome, Shikamaru muttered. 
I'll personally guarantee your safety during our mission, Yama said in a formal and stoic voice. It seems she still remembered all the harsh etiquette training she received from her clan. Hello, beautiful, Kenshin said, approaching Hinata. How did I miss you? Kenshin asked while bowing and kissing Hinata's hand. Naruto's eye was twitching and he was considering running a Jidori through Kenshin himself. Hands off my girlfriend, Naruto growled, and Kenshin raised an eyebrow. Be nice, Naru, Hinata said, removing her hand from Kenshin's grasp. You dare talk to me in such a casual manner, peasant? Kenshin asked with a smirk. Naruto by now was releasing killer intent on the annoying Kenshin. Why would such a beauty associate with you? Kenshin asked, further angering him. That's it, Naruto said, and quickly placed a hand on Kenshin's shoulder and warped him away into his combi dimension. Ah, uh, much better, Naruto said, and everyone stared at him. He just sent the daimyo's fucking grandson somewhere. Naruto, what did you do? Sonny asked while everyone else was staring at the blonde who was acting like nothing had happened. We are supposed to escort him, right? Naruto asked and Sonny nodded. What safer place than my personal pocket dimension? I'm the only one who has access to it, Naruto explained and Sonny shook her head. Get him back here, Sonny said and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. He used his come when he brought him back to the real world. Where did you send me to? It was so dark and quiet, Kenjin said as he arrived and immediately stumbled to the ground, keeping a safe distance from Naruto and started sucking his right thumb while rocking himself. They will be your escort team, and this is Naruto as you have met Sasuke Uchiha, Hinata Kuga, and Shikamaru Naro, Sonata explained, and Kenshin nodded in defeat, embracing his fate. Also, Naruto, there's another thing you have to worry about, Sonata said, Naruto's team focus on her. Lord Kenjin has a bound in his head due to his bloodline, so be extra careful, Sonata explained, and Naruto raised an eyebrow. Bloodline, are you a shinobi? Naruto asked. I have no shinobi training. I just know how to use chakra so I can control my bloodline, Kenshin asked. Naruto nodded. Can you tell us about it? Shikamaru asked. Every bit of information was valuable, even as irrelevant as it may seem. It's called Dark Release, and with it I can absorb, manipulate, and release someone else's chakra, Kenshin said, while showing everyone the palm of his hands. In his palm uh, was a mark that looked like two dimensions overlapping each other. Interesting, Hiruzen said. Uh, that is a very useful bloodline, Hiruzen said, smoking on his pipe. With the proper training and skill, this bloodline would render any ninjutsu attack against the user harmless. Although sometimes I can't absorb elemental attacks, I don't really understand why, Kenshin said, sighing, and everyone nodded. You have your mission, now get going, so I said, and Naruto turned to address his team. You are the Okage, pack for two weeks, as we'll be traveling at civilian pace. Meet at the north gate in one hour, Naruto said, and everyone left the Okage's office to pack and start their new mission. Looks like Naruto really grew up into a good person, Sonata softly said. Hinata really did wonders for him while he was growing up, Hiruzen said. And the bride is already stronger than me, Sonata said, scoffing. Can you imagine how strong he'll be when he reaches his prime, Sonata rhetorically asked, and Hiruzen shivered. Naruto was a Kage-level shinobi at 14 years old. What level would he be when he reached his prime in around 3-4 to four years? That was something he didn't want to find out.